Well, good morning. Good morning, congregation. Good morning to those of you that are online and watching us online. Welcome. It's nice to have you here. It's Easter Sunday, and I can't, I can't tell you how I'm just so excited to, to be here today. Um, uh, you know, this, this is a, a very bad paraphrase, but, you know, when Paul talks in Corinthians that if, if Christ hasn't been resurrected, then our faith means nothing. It's, it's futile. But he was resurrected. He was seen by many people. He showed himself. So we, we believe in a resurrected Christ, and today's the day that we celebrate that. So he is risen. I got to tell you, that was pretty good because I, I was going to come in and go, I'm going to have to do this a couple times because I'm going to do it once and then I'll do it again. But I think that covered it. Thank you. You guys are, you guys are absolutely awesome. Um, uh, just thought I, 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 I usually do a lot of announcements and do long ones, but I'm not going to do long ones today unless I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. those that know me are clapping. Um, uh, but I do want to mention one thing. Our, our sister Donna Odell is not doing well. I got a call yesterday. She's just not doing well. So keep Donna Odell in your prayers. And also Angel DeGrotto. I was hoping that she was going to be here today, but I don't see her. So she's not doing very well either. So keep those two ladies in your prayer if, if, if you would. Um, today after service, we got donuts outside, donuts and coffee. So hang out, join us, sit around and visit and talk. It'd just be great to kind of spend some time with you all. Um, today... We've got, a, we've got a special, a couple special guests in the house today. We have, in our house today, Donna Coppersmith is with us. Donna Coppersmith. Oh, oh, and, and, and her husband, Mike. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike happens to be here with us as well. And um, Mike, could you come up and just say a couple things? It's been 10 years since you've been here. Um, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you just could come up. But I do. <laughs> Um, you know, so loved and so admired by so many people. Uh, Thank you, Cliff. Of course. Of course. Okay. I mean. This is familiar. Amen. <laughs> hey, it's uh, just great to be here uh, this Sunday. It gives us great joy. You know, it was um, 40 uh, years ago on Easter Sunday that Donna and I celebrated our first Easter here at Our Saviors. Hard to believe. I met one of the uh, uh, Christian press today. I saw Christian and, or Arthur press, and Arthur was just a little guy when I was around here. And now he is 16 years older than I was when I came to pastor our saviors. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, when Don and I, when we arrived, we were very young. And, um, our, it, and our, it seemed like our best days were ahead of us. And then, uh, faster than we could imagine, Ten years ago, we were standing here and celebrating our uh, last Easter with you uh, as a pastor of our saviors. And uh, now here we are again, ten years later, our first visit back to Palm Springs and to our saviors. And uh, uh now, you know, Donna and I, we, we haven't aged a bit in 10 years. No, no. <laughs> but the rest of you, you look a lot older. <laughs> and so do we. You know, uh, life is all about change, isn't it? Uh, Donna and I, we've seen a, a lot of changes over the past 10 years. Uh, you, in your own personal life, you've seen a lot of changes. Our saviors has seen a lot of changes. I think about um, all of the people who were part of our church family who have gone on to be with the Lord in the past 10 years. There's a, quite a Our Saviors group up in heaven. And, uh, uh, you know, 
we've seen a lot of changes, but the great thing is that the love of Jesus Christ never changes. Amen. Amen. The word of Jesus Christ never changes. The mission of Jesus Christ never changes. And we worship a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Now, I want to read you a scripture uh, that, Donna, if you wouldn't mind holding the mic so I can open up my Bible. You know, because we have this kind of unchanging God with his unchanging word and his unchanging mission for our life and our life together as a church, the great thing is that we can really say every day, both as individuals and as a church, our best days are still ahead of us. And I, I want to just read you uh, a, a short a verse from Psalm 39. I read this in my devotional time not long ago. Lord, remind me of how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away. My life is no longer than the width of my hand. An entire lifetime is just a moment to you. Human existence is but a breath. And so, Lord, where do I put my hope? My only hope is you. Don and I love all of you very, very much. And we love our saviors. And we are so grateful that we have a living God and savior resurrected from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he uh, lives, and because he lives, every day we can continue to do what we did for many years together when Donna and I were with you in this family of faith, putting our hope in Jesus and always saying our best days are still ahead of us. And I want you to say that as a church out loud right now. Our best days are still ahead of us because they are. And it's great to be back home. Thank you. Hug. Well, thank you, Mike. It's an honor and a, and a privilege and a pleasure to have both you and Donna in, in the house today after, after 10 years. So thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, just for the record, that was not my time. Mike's thing was not for me. <laughs> so don't count that against my announcement time, <laughs> just for the record. Um, this is a good time, I think, when we can stand up and greet one another on this, on this Easter Sunday. Stand up, greet your neighbor, spend some time today, um, gosh, being thankful, joyful, and loving, because the Lord is good. While we're kind of winding down a little bit, um, I'd like to remind everybody in the pew in front of you is one of our Savior's communication cards. And if you're new and you're just visiting, um, just put your name and maybe a phone number or an email address on that green card. There should be a card and a pen in the pew in front of you or a pencil. It's just kind of nice to, to keep track and, and see who's here and, and who's not here. Um, we, we're, we love that you're here today. It's amazing. We'd love to see you back next Sunday as well. So. Um, Let's, let's pray. Let's pray for today's service. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we so humbly come before your throne, Father, and, and we just say thanks. 
we are so unworthy. But you have provided a way, Father, through a resurrected Christ to have a relationship with you in eternity. Father, we thank you for that. Lord, today we pray for Pastor Rod and his message, that it falls on open hearts, Father, and that it, it's a seed that, that takes root and grows, and that it doesn't just stay in this sanctuary, Father, that, that this seed of love and hope goes out, goes out into the community that, that we live in, Father. We have the good news. Father, grant us the boldness to, to take that forward, Father. We love you and we thank you. We give this service to you today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. It is such a blessing to be here with you guys. We're going to stand together as we are able and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
we're going to continue our worship with um, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. He lives, amen. this time we're going to continue our service with um with offering and so if we could have the ushers come forward you know here at our saviors we have a lot of uh ministries that we get to be blessed to participate in we have um we've got homeless packets we've got the arizona indigenous peoples that we serve we have um global mission trips that we that we fund and we also have um our weekly pizza uh Pizza lunch, yeah, that's that's what it is. FCA. Um, FCA. So this, all of this funding um, helps to support that, and so we are blessed to give. It says that it is more blessed to give than to receive, and so if we could have the ushers come forward. <laughs> Thank you, band.
Thank you for just taking us to uh, the risen Lord's uh, today. Do you have any kids out there? Do you have any children hanging out there? Yeah, I know. Um, I need your help on something. You know, we do this Easter greeting, and uh, you got to forgive me. I was trying to go around meeting a number of people today, and uh, I was uh, saying uh, Merry Christmas to them. So <laughs> you may be in trouble today. Anyway, uh, could I have some kids come up front and help me with something? It's pretty easy. This, any, I, a couple of people have sunk into the pew. Okay, We're just going to do the Easter greeting where it says, he is risen. You know that. And Cliff kind of did that before, right? I got no kids coming up here. Dylan, buddy. All right. If Dylan's up here, anybody else want to come up and help us uh, with this? I'm a kid. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> He's also a drummer. Mm -hmm. Drummer, drummer, drummer. Oh, yeah. Come on up. Yeah. Dad, you can come up too, okay? You can come up too, okay? Any other uh, any teenagers? You don't have to be a kid, okay? You can be a teenager, sir. Any other adults that have enough courage to come up here? Huh? Come on. We got a couple of a bunch of chickens. Come. On. Oh, all right. All right. Here comes Sophia and here comes and here comes Mike. Yeah? Okay, come on up here. Come on up. Come on up. Okay, so we're going to... Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay, yeah. No, you can stay there, Tony. Okay. All right, so we're going to do this orchestrated, all right? So if you, if you know how to do this, it's a greeting. And, and, you know, Cliff already practiced with us a little. Are you, are you? Cliff came up here. Already practiced. So we're, we're going to say... He is risen, right? Bunch of kids. And then your response is? He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can't forget the hallelujah part, okay? Now, to do that, you need take a deep breath. You need some lung pressure and stuff like that. Is it all there with you? Huh? Good? Okay, well, you can't do it sitting down, though, okay? I'm going to ask you kindly to stand. Shake out the cobwebs a little bit. Okay, are you in good voice? Singer said you do it. It's like, you know, we're only going to do it once. You know, I'm not going to ask you to do it a couple of times. We're going to do it once, right? And the Lord says, once is enough. All right? You ready? Okay, you guys got the lead. You got the lead. I always wanted to direct a choir, you know? So it's like your, your line is, your line, he is risen. Really good. Ready? On three. And I'll wait for me to direct. I never had a chance to do this. Ready? One. <laughs> One, two, three. He is risen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, be, please be seated. All right, okay. All right, okay. Unless you guys want to stay up here for the children's message. Oh, no, wait. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, I, you got to look out for those drummers. They're dangerous. Okay, all right, okay. Here we go. Good morning. I'm Pastor Rod, and... Uh, hang out here once in a while and uh, try to do it. And uh, we always do this, you know, um, pastors are pastors. So I got to say, Pastor Mike and Donna, welcome. Great to have you here. Never had a chance to meet you, but heard a thousand things about you and uh, honored and privileged to meet you. So after church today or at some point, okay? By the way, when you leave today, one of the things that I, I sometimes I like to hang out at churches and just kind of go in, not tell them I'm Pastor Rod or something like that, just kind of go in. I like to, you know, go into a church and just see just how warm and friendly and greeting they are with one another, right? And if I walk into a church and it's like no one says anything to me, doesn't even barely greet me, aside from the greeters because they're, we all know they're official, so that's what they're supposed to do, right? So uh, uh, I, I just kind of like to sneak in, see, see what they are, and see uh, at the end of church, does anybody come up and greet? Then I walk into, uh, and, and sometimes that happens, you know, and it's not as if I'm going, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just kind of seeing how they are because the temperature of the heart of a congregation, of a body of Christ in place is about what Christ would be with his people. 
So today, uh, during the service, after the service, we're going to commune together. So, I mean, that's something right there. That's a body of Christ as one together when we have Holy Communion. So after the service, um, if you don't have to run out right away or grab, you know, grab brunch or something like that, greet someone, welcome someone, go up to someone uh, that you don't know and welcome them, okay? Would you do that? Yeah, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, We'll do that. Good morning, Jerusalem. Easter Sunday in Jerusalem. And just a word there as we reflect on our global situations. Today, my prayer, our prayer is, good morning, Jerusalem. May you be blessed with peace with God that would bring healing and peace that a whole part of the world and throughout our world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, good morning, Jerusalem. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Um, how many of you had to kind of rush in today to get here to, uh, to, get here to church? Yeah, and, and, and it looks like it too. <laughs> Do I look a bit frazzled? Because I had a, a Vista Chino was shut down. I get to the end and all of a sudden, I can't get to church. Yeah? This is, so I go, okay. Um, so I get out of that, turn around another way. I come down another way. Here's a major accident with flashing, yeah, some of you have seen flashing lights. So you're driving by, and of course, you know, if you're in faith and you want to do ministry at the same time when you're driving by them, you're also having, Lord, protect them. You know, it's Easter Sunday. Would you, would you give them life? Make sure that the, they're safe and that they're recovering, huh? How's that? Um, any rest of you kind of have? How many of you came in here cool and collected this morning? How many of you aren't even here yet? I mean, you didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't raise your hand. <laughs> so, okay, well... Um, so I got a little, just, just a little story for you about someone's rushing into church on a Sunday morning. God bless her. One morning, one Easter morning, and it happened to be Easter morning, a, a woman was on her way to church when her car broke down. Not wanting to be late for the special service, she ordered an Uber to pick her up. The car arrived, and she quickly jumped in the back. Halfway through the ride, she asked the driver a question, but the driver didn't respond. So she leaned forward and tapped the driver on the arm. The driver let out a scream. He swerved into the other lane. He almost hit another car. He slammed on the brakes and skidded over the shoulder. (sighs) The woman and driver sat in silence for a minute from the shock of what just happened. Finally, she said apologetically, wow, I'm sorry. I had no idea that tapping your shoulder would alarm you like that. And he said, no, really, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just that this is my first day driving Uber. You see, for the past 25 years, I've been driving a hearse. (laughs) Well, we are talking resurrection today, okay? We're talking about life and resurrection. Good morning, Jerusalem. My question to you this morning, you know, I hope... You have long-range plans. How many of you have 10-year plans for your life? How many of you have 10-year plans? Yeah, go ahead. Don't be bashful. How many of you have two-year plans for your life? Okay, how many of you are on the short list? Short list, you have a one-week plan for your life. Yeah, yeah, okay, too many. Okay, but be thinking of this. I'm going to tell you something. How How many of you are thinking 50 years into the future and have a plan for the future? Okay. Yeah, super, yeah. How many of you have a 100-year plan out to the future? A 100-year plan. You know, you're all kind of looking at me like this. I just want to tell you something. You know what? You all better be ready for an eternal plan because all of you have eternal life in the risen Jesus Christ. And you need to just be planning today and the rest of your life, not that you haven't before, for the eternal plan. That you have a, an eternal plan because of Jesus Christ. 
Good morning, Jerusalem. Let's take you there, you know. Have that long-term plan. Would like you to think at any point you want to go daydream during the sermon, feel free, and think about your eternal, longer than 100 year, eternal plan to live with Jesus in eternity. That's why he came for you. That's why he called you. If you have an inkling of faith in your heart, if you have this on Jesus, maybe you don't have the faith of Abraham. Maybe there's times that you feel that you're barely hanging on to faith, but faith is there. You have eternal life in Jesus. Be assured of that. Well, let's take a look. What's going on? Nancy, I think you got to reset me. That's what I want right there. Thank you. All right. Can you read this, uh, read this with me together? But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, Behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. Dazzling apparel, I think they made a run to Neiman Marcus. I don't know why scripture kind of says that. Take it a little bit before that. Here come the women. And the women we know from an assembly of different parts of the gospel. We got Mary Magdalene. We got Joanna. We got Mary, the mother of James. Um, We got the mother of uh, the sons of Zebedee. And then we have the other women that were along with them. So there was an assortment of women that were coming this morning. This morning in Jerusalem, expecting to see the body of Jesus Christ. They're coming to see the body of Jesus Christ. They had come prepared for that. And, of course, the stone is rolled over. You know how the stone got rolled over, right? How many of you know how the stone got got rolled over? Matthew says an angel descended out of heaven and rolled that thing back. Jesus had already risen. He didn't need an angel to roll the stone back. He had already risen. He was out of the tomb. But to show victory, that angel descended, Matthew said, out of heaven and rolled that stone. And you know, after he rolled that stone back, after that angel rolled the stone back, you know where that angel ended up? Anybody know? Matthew says he sat on top of that huge stone. Picture that, would you, for a minute? The angel sitting on top of this huge stone rolled so that tomb could be open. If that isn't a picture of victory, I don't know what. I think that angel sitting up there in all the, you know, glory and uh, lightning freaked out the guards who were there. They passed out. There was an earthquake. I think that angel was sitting up on the top of that, like this. Victory, our Lord has had victory. Sitting on top of it. It's like You know, the evil one, Satan, you thought Good Friday, you had won. We're just here to show you that you have lost because you have been defeated, the evil one, by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They're coming looking at the tomb. They're coming to do work with Jesus and put the spices on his body. And that's where the two men, the angels, later on it refers to them as the angels, We're there. They're looking for death. They're looking for a body of Jesus that they had seen on Good Friday. Because Joseph of Arimathea who was a very, very rich Jewish person and a follower of Jesus. In fact, Scripture says he was a disciple of Jesus. He had just carved out a brand new tomb, perfect. It was like a virgin tomb. No one had ever been laid into it. He was rich. He could afford it. It was right down in the garden, right down from Calvary. This quiet disciple of Jesus went to Pilate and asked for the body, if he could take the body down from the cross. 
when everyone else was afraid, when everyone else was fearful, when everyone else had run, when the Romans had done their thing and everybody had left, Joseph of Arimathea, this rich guy, Arimathea was a very, very uh, Jewish uh, community close to Jerusalem. He goes to Pilate, no less, and asks for the body. And Pilate gives him, gives him permission to take the body down for the cross. He needed help. You know who helped him? That also secret believer in Jesus who came in John chapter 3, it tells us, a person named Nicodemus. That famous verse of John 3.16 was spoken to Nicodemus. Nicodemus joined Joseph of Arimathea. Picture this. And the women are watching. And they carried his body. They took him down. Can you imagine if it was you or me, women, men, young, old, taking down the body of Jesus from the cross? Picture that. They left him hanging there. They took him off that cross, his dead body. And Joseph and Nicodemus carried it to Joseph's brand new tomb. Probably a tomb that he had saved for himself and for his family. He was giving it to Jesus. You with me? Are you there? While they lay him in the tomb, those two guys, the women are looking off. The women that I named off in a distance are looking and watching, probably making sure that they're doing it right. And as they laid him, Nicodemus and Joseph took care of necessary things, wrapping his body. That's Good Friday. On Saturday, the Pharisees go to Pilate and say, Look, you know what the disciples are going to say. They're going to say that he's risen from the dead. They're going to steal his body, and then they're going to live it out there. Says, and Pilate says, look, take your own praetorian guard. Take your guard, and you put a seal on it. Make sure. You make sure that it's sealed. So, of course, they did. Now we're on Sunday morning. Easter, welcome to Jerusalem. And the women come walking in. This is, these are the first words are you, are you with me about this one? Spiritually, gang, we, we come together on this. These are the first words that give a hint, a hint of life, not death. We've come through Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Jesus dying, had to sit still for the Sabbath on Saturday, and all of a sudden, they're looking for the dead. This is the very, very first inkling hint of life. The angels say to them, Why do you seek the living? Do you got that? That is the most powerful (laughs) resurrection verse that gets starts to speak to you and me. Those words from that angel are not just spoken to the women, they're spoken to us. Why do you seek the living? What what does that mean? Where is that? What are they talking about speaking about the living? We've come for Jesus. Why do you seek the living among the dead? What would be your first reaction? What would be your first thought if we are going to that tomb and we're looking for Jesus because they knew who we're seeking. We're seeking Jesus. That's why we've come. And they've just said, why are you seeking the living? Could it be? Could it be that he is living? Uh, All we see is an empty tomb. So my next question (laughs) is, well, okay, is this your question? Where is he? Where did he go? If he's not here, I need a little bit more proof. You're saying that, why are we seeking the living? Well, we've come to see him, dead. And now you're giving us a whole different, another version. Next comes our piece like this. You ever get this? Breaking news. How many of you are big on breaking news? Come on, gang. Can you say it with me? Just say breaking news. Breaking breaking news. Come on, really say it. Breaking news. Make it sound like you're one of the channel. What's our channel here? What's our local station? Yeah. Cha- yeah. 33? 23. Okay. Say, okay. A little bit of practice. If you're good enough, maybe you can, maybe you can do the announcement on TV today. You know, say, can you do this breaking news with me? You ready together? Here it goes. Breaking news. He is, but has risen. (sighs) 
Good job on the breaking news. I, you know, do you ever get tired of breaking news? Is there any, here's the question, is there any questions that not breaking news? No, every, every, you know, every time they come on, there's breaking news, breaking news. Gang, I want to tell you, this is the world's greatest breaking news ever. There has never been breaking news that has come close to this news. He is not here. He is risen. This is the breaking news for all eternity, for now, for the past, for the present, for the future. This is your breaking news. This is what the angel gave to them. Breaking news. Every morning, we should wake up with this breaking news. Because you know what the other breaking news is like? I can guarantee you. Do this sometime. Take the first 10 articles, the first reports out that you get, and I can guarantee six, maybe seven are negative. They're negative. They're going to speak of death. They're going to talk about destruction. They're going to talk about fires. They're going to talk about how people have, you know, hurt one another, how people have been mean. You know, try it sometimes. Keep a scorecard of the first 10 reports. And I can guarantee you the first six and seven are negative. Just check it out sometime. Ah, except for the last one. I love how they ended up. And number 10, oh, and we close out today's breaking news story with the fireman rescued a cat from the upper tree, which is great. That's just wonderful, especially for you cat lovers. But that kind of great news, that breaking news doesn't compare to this breaking. This is the breaking news that you and I need to wake up to every morning. He is not here but has risen. So now they have reassurance that Jesus Christ has risen. Can you put yourself in those women's shoes and be there as men, as women, and there, th th this thing about, this is unbelievable, is it not? This is unbelievable. The first time I'm hearing this, if I'm with them, I'm going, this is all, where do we go from here? What do we do? This is all a bit too much. We need what? We need, sightings. come on, sightings. We need we got to see something, right? Now that he's risen, what we see is an empty tomb. We need sightings. What are some of the sightings? So the Lord goes, here come the sightings. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? That's Jesus. I want you to see that as I posted it up there for you. Woman, why are you weeping? You are... Whom are you seeking? These are the first words of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. The first words. The risen Lord. This is the first ones that he spoke. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And he speaks to someone that you very well know. Someone that you're very, very assured of. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene as she sat in that garden and she came to the tomb and the angel told her. And yet, she goes out to the garden. The angel had asked her the same thing. Why are you weeping? And so now Mary's in the garden. Jesus says this to her. I want you to remember this. These are the very first words of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Mary would not leave that tomb. Do you know what it's like to stay and to hang out in the midst of grief and not leave? Because your love for someone who has changed your life completely because he cast out seven demons from her life, flipped her life completely around, gave her a new life. Do you understand why she just stayed when everyone else left? She's there. She will not leave till she can find his body. Because why? Because she thinks it's the gardener talking to her. He says, can you just tell me where you have laid him and I will go get him. Mary Magdalene is going to go get Jesus. I try to think what she would have done with his body. I, I, as I contemplated this the other day, I thought she must have been thinking she would have to show me where you put him and I will pick him up. I'll take him back perhaps to the tomb. 
and I'll take care of them with the spices that I bought. Just a possibility. You don't have to believe that. It was just something I was contemplating. Why else would she say, where have you taken him so that I may go get him? And the Lord does something that he does to you and me. He's done it to every person in here today. He calls her name, just like he calls your name. And on the last day, gang, you want to get this real easy. You don't have to do anything because he will do it. He's already done it. But on the last day, when he wants to resurrect your body, because your soul would have been already, when you leave from this life, to go to be with Jesus, your soul will be with Jesus. But your body will be in the grave. He's going to call you by name. It's going to get real personal on Resurrection Day. He's going to call you, and it's going to be as personal as he was here to Mary, and that's the way he said it. Can you imagine when he said her name? Do you think that she had ever heard him say his name before? (laughs) I wonder how many times. Just like he called out James and John and the other Marys and Peter and Philip and Andrew and all the other disciples, he called their names all the time. That's why it's important that you and I learn one another's names because believers in Christ know that Jesus knows your name, so we want to get to know you as the body of Christ, that you want to know your name. My name is Rodney. Please call me Rod. (laughs) Ah, You could call me Rodney if you want. (laughs) You know, sounds a little bit like my mom, but that's okay. Rodney! You didn't pick up your clothes after, okay, mom, okay. You want to get to know one another's name because he calls out her name, Mary. And when he did that, instead of mistaking him from the gardener, she recognized him as Jesus. And beyond that, she sees the resurrected Jesus as the first one. You got that? Mary Magdalene sees Jesus first. She hears his first words. Don't you want to be there? Don't you want to be that person that was out in the garden and said, where did you lay him? You know, where did you put him? I'll I'll go get him because he's changed my life. He's changed your life. He's given you eternal life. Maybe you got the same jobs. Maybe you got the same kids. Maybe you got the same place in life. Maybe you got that. But what has changed for you is that you will live forever. Your life is eternal with him in the glories of eternal life in heaven. I, you know, that, you know we think, what are we going to do there? We're going to be playing harps. I'm not so sure Jesus is going to let me play a harp. Drums, maybe. But... You know, the harp, yeah, the harp. I I don't even know if the Lord's going to let me sing in heaven. Although in heaven, everything's perfect, right? So you might be able to sing. So he gives us all these things, yeah? Our life has been changed. Greetings, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers, meaning the disciples and everybody else who's back there hiding out. This, This is the women as they were starting to go back as they were leaving the tomb and going back to Jerusalem, Jesus meets them in person, greets them. Yes, Mary Magdalene's with that group as well. But Jesus greets the group of women and says, greetings, do not be afraid. So now we have another sighting. And it goes on. The third bullet point, would you read this one with me? It says, what is this conversation? Can you say it together with me? See it? Here we go. What is... Yeah, that's a beautiful conversation. You know, you know where that conversation took place? Yeah? How many of you know? Let me see your hands. How many of you know where that is? It's a great story. It's in, it's in the Gospel of Luke. You've got to read it, okay? Uh, 24th chapter. It picks up on the resurrection. It's the two disciples, not considered part of the 12, but they were two followers of Christ, and they had kind of given up thoughts and hopes on who Jesus was. They're on the way back to Emmaus, Like they're saying, this whole vision is done. This whole dream that we had, it's over. It's wrapped up. They're packing it out and heading back to Emmaus. Cleopas is one. We don't know the name of the other, but they're walking to Emmaus. So unique. Jesus, the risen Lord, just kind of comes up to them, joins them, 
walks along with them. What is this um, conversation that you're holding with one another? Because they were saying, well, let us tell you, we're highly disappointed. This whole thing fell apart. The one who we thought was going to be the redeemer, they crucified. He was turned over, crucified. He died. And now, where we're there this morning, women were talking about that they, that they had seen him. Ah, it just seemed just too hard to believe. They're packing and going back. Jesus t- Tell me more. Tell me more. So they tell him a little bit more. Jesus ends up this talking to them, explaining about himself, about the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. He talks to those two on the trip. They said, you've got to stay for dinner. Can you stay? Please stay with us. So Jesus stays, breaks bread with them. As he breaks bread with them, guess what happens? The risen Lord in the glorified body pfft, is gone. He's gone. And they're going, we're not our hearts. We've seen the risen Lord. He's been in present with us. He walked with us on the path to Emmaus. They're saying, we're not our hearts burning. You know what that is? When the Holy Spirit is working and talking to our spirits and to our hearts, that the word of God is so alive that it catches us and takes us to that place. He said, we're not our hearts burning when he spoke to us. Not talking a bad burning, talking about a good burning into us, the true of Jesus. He was with us, and they was gone. Guess what they did? They kind of sat down at the table, well, let's spend the night watching TV, eh? You think he did that? No. You know what they did? We got to go back. <laughs> we got to go back to Jerusalem. We got to tell them what Jesus did. They go back, they tell the disciples, and the disciples, did the disciples believe the women when they told them we have seen the Lord? Did they believe him? No. It's not a trick question. Did they believe the two men when they told them? No, they didn't believe them either. While they were talking to the disciples, Jesus appears. That's our fourth bullet point. He appears. He appears in his midst. See my hands, my feet, my side. He said, it is I. Those words, when he says that, it is I, is convincing proof to them that is the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And they needed that proof, just like you and I need it. It's why we read the scripture. It's why we take it with the whole thing. And he says to them, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your heart? I want to tell you something about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He really wants us to have strong faith. He understands that we have doubts in our hearts. But you see what he's saying to the disciples? Why do doubts arise in your heart? Jesus' passion for you and me, and now I mean what's in him, the spirit of Jesus, his passion for you and me is to fully believe, is to fully grasp, is to fully take on and embrace the resurrection and that he lives and to believe on his holy name. He wants to comfort us. He's not going to cast you out if you have doubts. He's not going to kick you out of church or out of anywhere where you might be. He's not going to send you away if you have doubts. It's just his passion that he wants us to fully believe. His words, I am the resurrection and the life. Many times we look at the resurrection as being an event, and in fact it is, and that life is an event. Jesus would have you and I know that resurrection is caught up in him. I am the resurrection. As you and I are in Jesus, we have that resurrection. The moment that you have come to believe in Jesus and received him as your savior, that very moment you gained eternal life because of him. You gained it because he gave it to you. That very moment that you said it, that moment that you have right now that you're believing in Jesus, you have already eternal life living within you. That power that you shall live forever. Heaven heaven will be a deeply enjoyable place place to be with our Lord God and Jesus. 
the things of the, think, I want you to think of the most beautiful moments here on your life, okay? I'm not going to call on anyone. Just would you reflect for a moment of the most beautiful times and moments of your life? I hope there's more than one. I hope there's more than five. I hope there's some 20 plus most enjoyable times of your life. If you take that and multiply it for eternity, our happiness and joy in eternal life will be on anything that we can even get our hands wrapped around on the joyful moments in this life. By the way, I hope you have a joyful day for the rest of the day. As soon as I wrap up this sermon, you'll be more joyful. Yes? Well, then let's do that. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? (laughs) Do we believe this? Do we believe this? Yeah, we believe this. The church give this. You know, the church, the holy body of Christ gets criticized. That's saying, you have all kinds of rules. You have all kinds of res- you know, regulations. You're always asking for money. You, you, stuff, yeah, stuff like that. You know, there's so much wrong with the church. There's so much right about the church. You know why? Eternal life. I am the resurrection and the life. This is given to you. It doesn't cost you or me a dime. If you want to come and be baptized, let us know. We'll baptize you. It's free. It doesn't cost you $500 to be baptized. The body of Christ is free. Who gets that? That is the body of Christ. Along with baptism, forgiveness of sins, and the gift of eternal life. The resurrected Jesus Christ. All that is what the church offers. We have the best breaking news of anyone around. That you can have eternal life, you can live forever, and you have it freely given in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're not charging a thing, okay? When we take offering, we're not charging anything, you know? That's just helping keeping everything run and staff, stuff like that. But everything in Jesus is free. That's our message. And there's people who don't want it. We say, well, let's work with you a little bit. Can we work with you? This whole thing about Jesus is free. So let's keep going. Whoever believes in me. So he says, do you believe this? You know who he said that to? You know who Jesus said that to? Martha. You remember Mary and Martha? And Martha's the one who always gets criticized because she wasn't, you know, sitting down listening with Mary. This is Martha. He says this to Martha. Martha. He says, do you believe this? You know what her reply is? This is right at the resurrection of her brother. And he says, I am going to raise Lazarus. She says, oh, I know, Lord, in the resurrection on the last day. (laughs) And she says, oh, 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 I'm going to do it right here and right now. You're going to have your brother back, your loved brother. I'm going to do it right here. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? She gives, Martha gives the greatest confession of faith that equals Peter's, if not supersedes Peter's confession of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus says, who, you know, who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Peter, who are the disciples? Martha's equals that or supersedes this. You are the Christ who is to come into the world, the Savior of the world. That's her confession. You are the Christ. She's speaking to him as well. Greatest confession of faith in all the New Testament. Martha, do you believe this? Oh, yeah, she believed it. So, this is a closer, gang. This is a closer. I didn't come with a bunch of stories. Don't have a bunch of things to be able to tell you aside from this last story. Just want to take a minute to give you this last story. Maybe it'll take two minutes. I was teaching a class at St. Mark on spiritual gifts back in about the year 2000, right after Y2K, if any of you remember Y2K, the year 2000. It was in the January I was teaching a class. We had a good dear member in the congregation. His name was Buford Nelson. His nickname was Buff. You know, I always wanted a name like Buff. You know, yeah, it means a whole bunch of things, you know, Buff. But it, it, you know why I like the name Buff? You know, if you have a name like Buff, it's like people can't be mad at you, right? Like, Buff, I'm mad at you. It just doesn't work. 
You know, it, it, it doesn't hang on anything. Buff, how you do it? And that's how you greeted him. Buff, how are things with you today? He owned an insurance company in downtown Sunnyvale. Okay, him and his family. He was a member, he was a, an original member of St. Mark Lutheran Church in Sunnyvale when he started in the basement of City Hall in, Sun, in Sunnyvale. And his wife, Maxine. They were both from Minnesota. Buff came to California, then he called for Maxine to come out to California. They were married in California. They didn't even have family because they were all back in Minnesota. But Buff and Maxine got married. Buff had a blood disease when I first came to St. Mark. And within that first year, year and a half, Buff's health started to deteriorate. He was in his high 70s, and he had been hospitalized. We knew that he did not have long for life. Teaching this class at St. Mark on like a Tuesday night, we get this emergency call come to church that at O'Connell Hospital in St. Mark in San Jose, Buff was near the end of his life, and that Maxine was with him. I have a very good dear friend named Bart, Bart Baccalini, who was a Santa Clara sheriff. You ever ride with a sheriff or police officer? Have you ever ridden with it? Oh, yeah, it's just like being an astronaut and taking off. <clears throat> you get pressed and your face, you know, your face turns into contortions, get pressed against the seat. Bart knew that we had to get down to that hospital quick. Had another head elder, a guy named Jim Hillman, took over the teaching the gifts class. Said, we got to be out of here. Bart says, we're going now. Put me in his car. We raced that, you know, uh, 12, 15 minutes down to the O'Connor Hospital in eight minutes. Okay, went rushing into the hospital. And as we were there, there was Massine. Here was Buff. We knew that was the end of his life. <sighs> I had been called on to be with them and to minister. Bart is on my left. President of the congregation. Had a heart for the Lord. Loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Maxine was on the right, holding Buff's hands. Maxine said... Pastor Rod, would you read Psalm 23? It was his favorite. Of course, I had my Bible. I turned to Psalm 23, and I started reading, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I was reading Buff of the shepherd. In the middle of that prayer, as I held his other hand, I could tell, Buff had left this life and had passed away. I kept on reading. I finished the song for Maxine. I knew Buff was no longer with us. I sensed Maxine knew the same thing. Bart had been through things like this a hundred times. He knew. My piece is this. Buff went from a pastor reading to him about the shepherd to being with the shepherd face to face. That was Maxine's assurance. It was mine. It was Bart's. He went from just a pastor reading him about the Lord is my shepherd to be in the presence of the shepherd in the middle of that psalm. What would you take? What would you take? I'd take going to be with the shepherd in that. So the living shepherd says to this in closing, Revelation 1, he says to that great disciple as John bowed down the island of Patmos, and the resurrected, glorified, exalted Jesus Christ is present to him. Revelation 1, you can read it. And Jesus puts his hand on him. The same kind of touch, the same kind of personal connection that he said, Mary, that he says to John, and think, the one who was at the foot of the cross with the mother of Jesus. 
was John. And now the exalted Jesus in Revelation says to John, fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died. He said that for John. Because John knew he died. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. Gang, your savior, your shepherd is alive forevermore. His words, I am alive. Today, take that in. I am alive forevermore. Jesus, I love it. And because he is alive forevermore, you shall be alive forever, amen, forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas. He is risen. Nancy, do we have the confession up there for all of us as we go into communion? We're going to come before the Lord in a sense of admitting our sin, confessing to God, and saying, Lord, we need what you're giving freely, the forgiveness of sins. One word I want to say to you on this, it's very, very brief. As we go into this confession, I want you to think about this. And if it doesn't come up, I'll lead us You can follow me. So many times we look at ourselves and our brokenness and our sin. Or sometimes we compare ourselves to others. I want to suggest to you and to me this. Then when when we look at our sin and our our unholiness, that we look and compare ourselves to the Holy One of God, Jesus Christ, who is perfect. Let's put ourselves up against Jesus the sinless lamb of God. That's who I want to go up to because when I'm standing in front of the resurrected, holy Jesus who never sinned when he was on earth and is glorified today, I, like Peter, when Jesus worked a miracle for Peter and they caught the fish and and Peter said to Jesus, Lord, depart from me. Just get away from me because I'm not worthy to be around you. He saw the holiness of Jesus. The real way that we come to confession is to look at the holiness of God and say, right, Lord, you are holy. I am not. But because of your son, Jesus Christ, when you look at me, he sees holiness. That's why the Lord gives us confession. He doesn't want us carrying the burden. He looks at us through his son, Jesus Christ. He sees you as holy. He sees me as holy. So I am more than willing to make confession of my sin. Do we have it up there? Nope. Well, I'm going to lead you. Would you stand up before we go to communion? If you can say just a few brief words along with me, okay? We'll see them. I won't make it difficult. I won't make it long, okay? In your heart, if you want to, if you have difficulty saying out loud, speak it in your heart, if you would. You ready? Here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, We readily admit that we can't stand in front of your holiness and be perfect. But you sent your son, Jesus. And as we admit our brokenness and sin, we know that you forgive us immediately. And all God's people said, amen. In the name and in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, as an ordained servant of the Lord, I'm fortunate to announce to you the forgiveness of sins, of all of your sins, all of my sins. We are set free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. We're going to invite you to communion once we prepare our... uh, The gang is going to lead us in worship and invite you to sing. Our uh, ushers are going to help you up here. We're going to serve uh, communion over here, communion over here. This is his promise 
to you of forgiveness, to strengthening of faith, say, it's his passion that you might not have any doubts. So come and believe and receive. You're invited to the Lord's table. in which he was betrayed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this often in remembrance of me in the same manner also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying take and drink This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
hear the closing benediction and to the group who's going to lead us in our closing song. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you his peace. Amen. God bless you. Have a great resurrection day. Make sure you talk to someone. They're going to lead us in a closing song. Lift them high.
Go in peace. Be blessed.